in the in continuation in continuation to our uh, previous class on uh, over production of primary metabolites we will be just studying uh, further uh, uh, types with uh, lots of examples uh, just a recap of what we studied in the last uh, ppt modification of permeability so this was a classical example to show how uh, just by understanding the microbial blueprint that is uh, how they how to un by understanding their metabolic pathways very well uh, you even without doing mutation you can over produce the product just by making the or just by not giving biotin in the medium you make the cell wall very thin so that the organism will excrete the glutamic acid and uh, without glutamic acid inside the cell no feedback control system will happen and uh, using this technique uh, people have uh, produced 50 grams of glutamic acid per liter uh, by using cornibacterium glutamicum so this is one of the classical example given to you in the previous session uh, now but still that was only one example very rare example of uh, uh, you are doing over production without mutation but 99 percentage of the strain improvement involves uh, mutation and in, uh, when you do mutation the question normally asked is what type of mutants you will be generating so usually two types of mutants will be we will be generated during strain improvement one is called oxotrophic one is called resistant oxotrophic mutant means uh, usually by because of mutation the organism will not produce end product suppose uh, unbranched pathway if you take a is converted to finally e, e is the end product if the organism doesn't produce the end product e we call such organism as oxotrophic mutant why because if it doesn't produce the end product e e is usually called as prime uh, metabolite primary metabolite which is required for microbial growth when they don't produce e they cannot grow in the normal they cannot grow in uh, properly such organisms are called as mutants we call them as oxotrophic or nutritional mutants because they don't produce the end product e and uh, such mutants are generated during our strain improvement technique so you just read the line that it is given uh, below oxotrophic mutant that which would not produce the end product is called as oxotrophic mutant and in our uh, uh, industrial uh, microbiology term we we call them as oxotrophic mutants are those which do not produce feedback inhibitors or repressors so that also is a meaning you can easily understand from here that because it doesn't produce the end product e uh, you all you already know that e only will do feedback control system on the first enzyme in the pathway because it is not producing the end product the oxotrophic mutants uh, uh, feedback control system will not happen so those which do not produce feedback inhibitor or repressors are also uh, one more way of uh, calling them as oxotrophic mutant one more mutant is resistant mutant resistant mutant means uh, it is just opposite to oxotrophic mutant uh, end product is produced but uh, the end product cannot go do feedback control end product is being produced here but when it cannot do the control on enzyme e1 that is also a type of mutant we call them as the resistant mutant so two types of mutants are there basically oxotrophic mutant and resistant mutants and uh, this is the meaning the difference you should very clearly understand one will not produce inhibitor one will not recognize the inhibitor that is the difference between these two mutants so for let us see this topic usually involves uh, quoting of lot of examples we let us see few examples for oxotrophic mutant first in the next ppt we will see resistant mutants oxotrophic mutant examples if we see uh, here you can see a is getting converted to b b to c c to d and e t to e e is the end product as i told you what is oxotrophic mutant e is not produced when the end product is not produced it is called oxotrophic mutant well and good uh, why we why we are interested in oxotrophic mutant because in the pathway you can see below the c there is one dark uh, arrow mark going vertically down uh, it shows that c is the product of our interest we want to produce c commercially large scale production of c we want because c is of our interest so when you want c usually organism will not produce c because c will be immediately converted to d and d to e but if you want c to be over produced only way is you mutate the enzyme that converts c to d mutate the enzyme so can you see the dotted line after c the dotted line indicates that that reaction is not happening 
in this mu in this organism because the reaction is not happening c why the reaction is not happening because the enzyme is mutated the enzyme which converts c to d is mutated because d is not produced e also will not be produced that is why we call this as oxotropic mutant and you can see by this process c will will accumulate in excess because if, without e being produced e only is responsible for feedback control because e is not there no feedback control will happen and c will keep on accumulating but if you want to grow this cell in the medium in in the medium you have to give less amount of e not more if you give more e e will come inside and do feedback control so give less e so that the cell will keep growing but it will produce excess of c this is called oxotrophic mutant for strain improvement this is one more hypothetical example here also we are interested in c you can see the arrow mark at the dark arrow mark going horizontally towards right hand side we want to produce c in excess but what we do here is you can see a dotted line between c and d that means we are mutating one of the enzyme that converts c to d so uh, what will happen in this example you can just uh, assume that e will not be produced because e is not produced uh, you can see from e one arrow mark broken line goes to a and uh, that will not happen so because e is not there e because e is not uh, being produced e cannot uh, e is not there to control a so naturally it keeps on producing uh, c will be produced uh, when some c will be converted to g also uh, but c production keeps happening and g will not be produced more why, why because you can see in the arrow mark dotted line from g when arrow mark broken line goes to uh, between c and f one arrow mark goes from g it goes to between c and f that means g will control the branching point and it will will stop conversion of c to g so that means g will not be over produced whenever g is over getting over produced it will go and control its own branching point so what will accumulate in this example is c will accumulate so uh, this is one more hypothetical example third hypothetical example you can see here Uh, this is like previous example but here two dotted lines you can see that is both the branching point from c both the branching point gets mutated so both are given in dots that means uh, c will not be converted to d and c will not be converted to f so in this case e and g both are not produced by microorganism so what do we call this mutant is double oxotrophic mutant because it will not produce both e and g both has to be both e and g should be given in medium in less concentration and uh, naturally c will accumulate uh, hypothetical example 4 you can see we are interested in f this time we want to over produce f what to do here we are mutating the enzyme that converts c to d so that c will accumulate and e will not be produced so no feedback control and uh, moreover f we want so we don't want f to get converted to g so we mutate the enzyme that converts f to g also so two mutation we are doing in two different enzymes and f only will accumulate this mutant also doesn't produce both then products e and g and we can call them as double oxotrophic mutant example hypothetic example 5 we see here there are three end products this the 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 pathway branches two times double branching pathway it is it branches at c it branches at f it it produces three end products e g and i but uh, we want to over produce e here and one more speciality you can see this is called concerted feedback control system where e and i both should join together then only they will control enzyme uh, first enzyme in the pathway so by mutating the by mutating one you can see between c and f dotted lines are there that particular branching point enzyme is mutated so c will not be converted to f naturally when this enzyme is mutated c will not get converted to f so g and i will not be produced because i is not getting produced i cannot uh, because i is not there e alone cannot go and bind to uh, enzyme uh, e1 and because of this feedback control system will never happen and uh, such mutants are also called double oxotrophic mutant because they don't produce both g and i but they produce only e so by this process you can over produce e so this is also one hypothetical example a good example for oxotrophic mutants now how these oxotrophic mutants are uh, developed in the lab let us see this is a practical part uh, which people do in industry 
uh, you have to, in the exam you have to just write a few points about it uh, based you have already studied this practical example in your uh, second semester uh, microbial genetics practical but just remember it i will just highlight to you how this works basically we call it as penicillin uh, selection technique we call this as penicillin selection what you see here below is penicillin selection technique what we do here is we take uh, the uh, a mutant uh, and we do keep on doing mutation more and more mutation will do till it becomes a uh, strain improvement so we grow it in minimal medium so mean for example let us take here example of lysine mutant you are interested in over production of lysine so uh, you, you are uh, you, you are growing the organism in a minimal medium first uh, and after uh, what you what you do here is uh, once the organism grows in minimal medium uh, you you put it you put it in a uh, complete medium and you grow them very well that means once they reach a particular number uh, you you again transfer it into minimal medium this time what happens uh, you, you be, when you put it in minimal medium before you put it in minimal medium you are doing mutation you take the organism uh, you do mutation and put it in minimal medium what happens here is two types of organisms will be there in the uh, medium one is wild type one is mutant uh, when you put it in minimal medium uh, when you put it in minimal medium with penicillin uh, as an antibiotic in the medium you know the role of penicillin it will go and block it will go and kill those cells which are making cell wall so in minimal medium what will happen all the wild type cells which are trying to grow in the minimal medium they will be killed and all the mutants uh, which have undergone mutation successfully will not grow in minimal medium so they will survive so this technique you have already studied please remember we call it as ampicillin, ampicillin selection technique in your uh, second semester the same thing we call it here as penicillin selection technique both ampicillin and penicillin are same type of mode of action antibiotic what we do here basically is we expose the organism to uh, mutagenic agent for example uv after uh, exposing some organism will get mutated some organism uh, will not get mutated when you plate it in when you put it in minimal medium all those organisms which have not got mutated will try to grow in minimal medium because they are we call them as wild type when they try to grow they will be killed by uh, penicillin all the remaining organisms which have become mutant oxotrophic mutant they cannot grow in minimal medium so they will not be killed by penicillin so uh, this technique is just used to, to separate wild type uh, organisms from oxotrophic mutant so it is called as isolation of oxotrophic mutant in the laboratory condition this is a standard technique followed world over by people who are doing strain improvement not only strain improvement anyone who is isolating oxotrophic mutant in the lab they will follow this technique called as penicillin selection technique i will just uh, summarize it and tell you once again uh, we take an organism uh, we expose it to uv light uh, some will get mutated some will remain wild type uh, after mutation to separate uh, mutant from wild type we will put it in minimal medium and we will add penicillin into the medium wild type organisms will try to grow in the minimal medium because they are wild type and they will be killed by penicillin instantly mutants oxotrophic mutants which cannot grow in minimal medium uh, because they are not growing they will not be killed by penicillin at the end of uh, incubation you have to do centrifugation uh, remove the penicillin uh, when you separate the penicillin and uh, 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 centrifuge the cells and separate it from penicillin you you only cells that have survived the penicillin treatment will be oxotrophic mutant when you plate whatever colony grows on the plate they are oxotrophic mutant so it is one of the standard technique used for separation of oxotrophic mutant from wild type uh, this is a live example in industry as i told you i have been giving you lots of hypothetical example but this is live example of how uh, penicillin how uh, uh, organism is used to produce uh, um, um, or produce any products so in this example just observe lysine lysine in the extreme left hand side corner you can see lysine we are interested in lysine over production but uh, if you want to produce lysine uh, you have to understand the blueprint of the organism the blueprint says that lysine in, in combination with threonine 
uh, will undergo concerted feedback inhibition on the first enzyme that converts aspartate to aspartyl phosphate. So, if you want lysine to be overproduced, what you have to do here is you have to mutate the enzyme that converts aspartyl semialdehyde to homocysteine. If you do mutation of this enzyme that converts that converts aspartyl semialdehyde to homocysteine, naturally homocysteine will not be produced and naturally. Uh, that that branching pathway will get stopped so because you are stopping the branching pathway methionine will not be produced threonine isoleucine nothing will be produced you have to give all these nutrients in the uh, medium if you do this lysine will be produced in excess so this is being successfully done in the industry Mm, uh, here also they are using carnibacterium and glutamicum and they are producing lysine in excess uh, by following this uh, live example they are uh, getting 44 grams of lysine they are producing it per liter that is 44 grams of lysine is produced per liter so in the next ppt we will study about resistant mutant this is about oxotrophic mutant next we will study about the resistant mutant